On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of the Locked On Rays podcast. And today, Ulysses, we have a very, very, very special guest, and that is one Greg Jones, one of the Rays' top prospects and one of the top prospects in all of baseball. That's right. Greg, how you doing? Doing good. How about you guys? Not not too shabby. I mean, we're, we're pretty excited to have you on the show. And so I'm, I'm just going to give you a, a fast fold down the middle right now. Where are you right now? How are you feeling? How's the spring training experience gone for you today? Or this year, rather? Uh, I think uh, spring training has gone good for a lot of people. You know, just getting back into things is nice. You know, getting finally to be around the big leaguers a little bit, you know, is nice. So um, spring training has been going very well for me personally, you know, just trying to get back in the role of things, getting my reps in, you know, getting them feel at the plate. But all things are starting to come together. Yeah, and are there any big leaguers in camp so far that you vibed with the most or that you've had in-depth conversations with and learned a thing or two from? Like, hey, man, this guy really has some good insight. It's, it's great talking to this dude. I mean, I always enjoy talking to Taylor Walls whenever I get the chance, but mm. he's always got some good info for me. Oh, well, that must be some uh, competition there, fielding ground balls at shortstop. Uh, when we get to be on the field at the same time, yes. It can get a little bit competitive sometimes, but you know we're just out here out there trying to have fun. Good, Greg. Uh, well, let's let's hear from you. Is Taylor Walls was he the best defensive player in the minor leagues, and do you think he has the potential to be one of the best defensive players in the major leagues? Uh, from what I've seen, hands down, one of the best defenders I've ever seen. So I don't see why not. Awesome. <laughs> well, that's pretty exciting. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. Um, let's go with some flashback uh, memories here. Uh, of course, you had a kind of a, a late bloom in high school. Senior year, you started to get some 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 good spotlight on you. What were some of the reasons why when you were selected after senior year uh, by the Orioles, you chose to not go pro and, and go to colleges? What, what, what was the, the train of thought there? Well, you know, I was probably about five nine, a buck fifty, dripping wet. So physically, didn't feel like I was ready. And, you know, I never lived out of the house by myself without my parents being all around. So honestly, didn't feel like I was ready for that at the time either. So I feel like going to college gave me a chance to just like grow as a human, learn how to live on your own a little bit, learn a lot more about yourself as a baseball player. And so that's what I decided. That's the route I decided to take. When you say, you know, I want to focus a, a little bit on, on the personal, not the baseball just yet. Uh, what were some of those things that, that you kind of learned about yourself uh, off the baseball field? Uh, you know, like what just what you like, what gets you prepared for a game during the day? Like the things, the steps you take throughout the day, like just keeping your mind equal, like not going. I mean, not being taken out of the moment, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, you got a whole bunch of other stuff going around, going on around you while you're in college. You know, you got girls to worry about. You got baseball to worry about. You got school to worry about. You know, it's just a whole bunch of things that you have to manage in order to get your work in. So, you know, you learn a lot about yourself as like what it takes for you to keep your keep you focused. Were there some hobbies or or mentors that kind of gave you the the, the path of this is how you balance all of that stuff out? Uh, I would say probably my college baseball coach, uh, Mark Scaff, because, you know, he preached, you know, you got to be you got to do your work in the in the classroom before you can get on the field. So, you know, if you didn't get your work done in the classroom, you weren't going to play. So I knew I had to get my work done if I wanted to play. So there's one way to learn how to get your homework done. So and a little bit of other time that you do have, you get to, you like to spend time with your teammates to get to know them as humans. So there's the rest of your time right there. That's a great. Uh, staying in the classroom, uh, I, I, I want to know who Greg Jones was as a student. Would, did you have a, a favorite a class, a favorite subject? Uh, what were you like in class? A, a guy in the front row or the, the, the last row in the, in the classroom? Who were you? I was definitely the quiet person who probably sat middle to back of the class and just <laughs> kept to myself and didn't talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and a favorite subject? I kind of lost favorite subjects after middle school. 
<laughs> baseball's his favorite subject. Let's go with that. I was always a front row yeah, person because my vision was so bad. I had to sit in the front row. That was it. That's right. That's right. Us uh, uh, folks with with glasses need to need to stay together. Um, moving on after college, obviously, then in the 2019 draft, the Tampa Bay Rays, you know, select you. But were there any rumblings of other teams that were kind of behind you? How was that process of, hmm, there are some scouts here. Hmm, they're only from the Rays or there are a couple teams. They're talking to me. They're talking to my uh, coaches. They're talking to my parents. They're talking to me personally. What were the, the teams that were around you? And did you actually know that the Tampa Bay Rays were going to select you? No, actually, I had no idea that the Rays were going to select me, actually, because they're one of the teams that I didn't really meet with when I was in college, like face to face. So, I mean, I just really didn't think about it. But there was a couple teams that were in the mix, not that I remember them off the top of my head anymore because, you know, focused on <laughs> the next the next things. But no, I really didn't. had no idea that the Rays were going to pick me. Man, that that's the race kind of way, right? Keep it yeah. quiet. Don't oh yeah, jump. I've I've learned that. <laughs> yeah, keep it on the down low. That is for sure. They like to have their information uh, proprietary there. Yeah. Um, Greg, going back a little bit and growing up, um, was baseball always your first love, or did you play some other sports and you eventually kind of molded into? Man, I could make a career out of this baseball thing. I didn't know if you know you went into football, basketball, some other sports, and then you finally settled into baseball. It was kind of always. Baseball is sort of my number one here. Well, baseball has been the only sport I've played my whole life. Mm. Wow. Yeah. And when I was an eighth grader in middle school, I wanted to try football for the first time. Okay. Obviously, biggest kid in the middle school. So, you know, like it's the biggest, like, it's the biggest you're going to get. I definitely won't, don't want to do it in high school as a freshman or anything. You know, I've yeah. been pushed out there. So, I tried it my eighth grade year and I just thought practicing five days a week like they do for one game a week was not what I wanted to do. So <laughs> I quickly did not play another year of football. Ah, there we go. What position did you play? Honestly, it was so long ago. I was like a fifth quarter and I never played before. I barely knew how to tackle. So I wouldn't say I was a good football player. So, gotcha. I mean, Greg is so athletic. I'd put him everywhere on the field, offense, defense, special teams, like one of those dudes yeah. that plays like six positions if he can, yeah. you know, on the, the football field. That's but really, that is interesting about I don't think it really mattered in middle school. I think everyone just ran around. That's true. That's a good <laughs> That's point true. as well. Um, so kind of speaking on baseball a little bit, uh, who did you idolize growing up? Who was your, what was your favorite team and who was your guy? Like, man, I want, I kind of model my game after this guy, right? I love watching this guy on TV and whatnot. I wouldn't say I had a favorite team growing up, but I would say definitely my favorite player that I really enjoyed watching was Jose Reyes like, growing up. I thought he was the coolest person ever, you know, switch hitting shortstop yes. with wheels. And I was like, that's the guy I want to be like. Yes. Oh, that's a good pick. That's a throwback pick, Kevin. Yeah, yeah it is. And uh, I would say Jose Reyes had a pretty good career. I would say that too. As well, yeah. too. So, um, Greg, Going through the minor leagues a little bit, and now you've you've had some some taste of pro baseball. Uh, what have been for you the biggest differences between A ball and, and double A thus far? Um, I would say pitchers don't make they make less mistakes. Mm -hmm. So like they count. So they want to make pitches on. They're going to make their pitches on, and they're not going to miss their spot often. But when they do, you need to make them pay for it. And if you don't, then you're probably going to get one of their eight pitches. <laughs> when when you say they are locating better, maybe they have command and control now a little bit better in, in double A than A, how does that affect your pre-game work, the scouting reports? Like Because if they're going to be pitching you better, then your research before the game has to increase, right? So what – what did you notice about that difference in, in, in uh -oh. your own scouting? Um, well, the scouting reports definitely, I think, get a little bit better. And you get percentages on, like, when they throw pitches. And, like, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you get information on, which I try to not look at so much because it'll just – it'll engulf you. But I just – honestly, I don't – I didn't really change much with, like, approach-wise. You know, I just try to stay the, the player I am. I, I, you said something I, I have to ask about. 
the numbers? Is it is it you know is it like savant? Is it fan graph stuff or the charts? I mean, is it crazy? Like it looks like a stats class. Is it digestible? I mean, how how in depth are these scouting reports? It's more like you're looking through like a a textbook. <laughs> a little calculus action. Okay. A little, a little bit of everything. I mean, it's ridiculous. Wow. I mean, if that's in double A, imagine. In in, in, yeah, in the MLB. Big oh, that's yeah. why I think yeah, that yeah. I don't know. If you, yeah, I don't know how much you've been exposed to this, but is there somebody that's there that's able to parse the information for you and say, yeah, maybe focus on this more so than that, or is it they just give you that information? It's like it's kind of up for you to interpret it. I mean, they kind of give it to you and like want you to interpret it your own type of way, but usually the hitting coach is there to like you know like point out the key points and what to focus on with the guy that's on the mound. So am I to understand that you're more of a traditional stats guy? You like the average, you like, you like seeing the home runs, you like seeing the RBIs, the stolen bases, and you don't really like the WRC plus the launch angle, all that stuff. Is, is that fair to say? I could care less. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you focus on? What, what tells you, what numbers do you say? And I'm like, okay, that's important to me. Um, like you said, just like the old style, just yeah. like average home runs, stolen bases. Like the guy's got a lot of stolen bases, he's fast. If he hits a lot of home runs, he's got power. If he gets on base a lot, he gets on base. He got a high average. So that's honestly, that's all that really speaks to me. Are there any defensive metrics that you focus on? Or is it just, you know, feedback from the coaches or how you're feeling? Like, man, I made a good, good play in that, that game or that inning. I didn't know if there's any advanced defensive numbers because that's such a – that's a mind of its own as well. I didn't know how much you focus on that. Yeah. I mean, I've seen them. I know what some of them mean. And do I focus on them a lot? No, because yeah. what is it going to do for me? Right. Honestly, knowing that information, like, I really don't care. I'm still going to go out there and play the same game of baseball that I'm going to play every single day. Yeah. If you you're if you're told, oh, your launch angle is 14 degrees, oh, it was 13.2. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I love that approach of just go out and play ball. Try to hit like, the ball in the air. Yeah. You yeah. see the ball hit the ball. I, I like that. That actually, do you think that actually helps you as you know, you're a switch hitter. So obviously you would have a little bit more to study, quote unquote, from yeah. each side of the plate. Um, is is that approach of just hit ball, see ball, uh, see ball, hit ball? not thinking about all the numbers kind of helps you be a good switch hitter? Um, it could. I don't know. Yeah. But as me as a player, I think that's that's how I think, and that's how I, I kind of operate. So that's I don't good. know. And talking about switch hitting, uh, do you have a more comfortable side? I, I know obviously some – Players might prefer might have more pop on one side than the other. Might have some more contact on the other. Um, how do you feel about your 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 switch hitting um, as of twenty twenty two? Honestly, I'm feeling like it's pretty even. You know, I get way more abs on the left hand side during the season, but my righty numbers were pretty good last year, and I was really pleased with them. And now, if you ask me. We're gonna have a home run derby, and which side am I gonna hit from? Uh huh. I might have to take a round before, like five on each side, just to like fill it out because okay. it, it's honestly, it's up in the wind. Who who knows? Yeah, I, you know, I think uh, I'm pretty sure you had 14 home runs and you had seven from each side. Is that correct? It was seven and seven. Yeah. So honestly, I, yeah. I I get what he's saying. You know, you have to okay, which swing is working today? Because you, you have both, right? But you could probably say since I had less ABs that I probably want to hit righty because I had less ABs compared yeah. to the same amount of home runs. So, you know, there's the little correlation right there. I like that. See, he does like numbers. That's that's that good is, numbers. I know, right there. I, I know the numbers, but do I pay attention to them often? No. Yeah. Uh huh. I am curious about this, Greg. You are, I mean, one of, if not the best athletes in the race organization and all of the minor leagues. Do you feel like you have much better of a jump to beat out an infield single? If it came to that from the left side compared to the right side, how much does kind of being on that side and getting to first help you? Or you're like, Hey, I can beat out anything, whether I'm hitting lefty or righty. I mean, that was the case at first when I was like nine years old, like beginning to switch it. I was like, maybe I can be faster at first base from another mm -hmm. spatter block, you know, it's closer. <laughs> but honestly, I think it's my numbers are slower on the right side, like home to first, but 
it's still getting down there pretty quick. Yeah. So. <laughs> you said nine years old when you uh, you started to switch hitting. What what was that? Was that a, was that a dad thing? Was that a baseball coach thing, or was it a nine year old Greg Jones saying, "You know what? I want to do this." Well, I was nine, and I was really really fast at the time. If you couldn't, I mean, if you couldn't predict it, but <laughs> I was like, maybe I should just get up there and bunt and get on base every time. And I was closer to first base, like I thought. Yeah. So I just started bunting over there, and then was, my dad was like, well, if you keep bunting over there, everyone's just going to know you're bunting every single time, so you got to learn how to hit. So started just trying to hit over there, and then next thing you know, here I am, whatever, almost 15 years later, still hitting. Uh, I think Greg made a good decision going into pro baseball. Yes. Uh, I, I've looked at the signing bonus before. I'm just going <laughs> well, to say that. Um, bunting. You mentioned it, Greg. What's your feeling on that? Are you okay with bunting on occasion? I know there's a lot of a lot of the people, a lot of the sabermetric and analytic types just hate the bunt. But where do you stand as you seem to have a somewhat of a traditional baseball mindset as well? And uh, I didn't know kind of where you stand on on the bunt issue, if you will. I mean, people who, that can use bunting as a weapon in the box is just adding to their game. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if you got it in the bag, why not pull it out? Yes. Yeah. And if the name of the game is get on base, score runs, make the pitcher uncomfortable, what better way to do that than if you are very yeah. uh, speedy, get yep. on base, and then, you know, cause some havoc on the bases like Greg yeah, can do. Yeah. If they're shifting against you, too, that's another there you consideration go. as well. Yeah. Oh, this is fantastic. I, I actually kind of, um, <laughs> I, I love this side uh, side of you, Greg, because a lot of the times with, you know, 2022, we hear a lot of the other arguments, mm -hmm. you know, uh, against traditional baseball. So this is refreshing. Is that kind of the vibe that you feel in clubhouses? Uh, are the guys talking more launch angles, WRC plus, or, are, or, or is the lexicon in the clubhouse, yo, look at my home runs? Look at my slugging. Look at my OPS. What's what's going on in the clubhouse? I mean, we don't talk analytics a lot. You know, if a guy's feeling good in the box, he's feeling good in the box. Mm. That's good. Yeah. Leave leave that to the nerds. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Leave it to the uh, keyboard commandos to go yeah. through all those uh, advanced numbers there. No, and okay, if you don't talk about it what makes you feel good at the box? Do you do something before or after each at bat? I know we've talked to a couple of, of other prospects that keep a journal trying to, you know, remember what they do to feel good. And you know, like I, I did this or are you a, a, that type of player? Or again, I'm getting the vibe that you're just, you wake up, you smell baseball, you play baseball and you go back home. I like watching video. Mm. Video. Uh-huh. Okay, what kind of uh, – are you using video for you, like what you did, or are you using videos for the pitchers that you're going to be facing? Both. I'm huge on video, I will say. That's what that's what honestly gives me the most information on like a pitcher or what I'm doing in the box. I, will, I can adjust on the fly by just watching myself, and, you know, try to feel – and then take it, take it the next day and like try to feel it, you know. I do – I feel like I do a really good job of that. That's cool. So what what sort of tendencies are you looking for when you're evaluating video? Is it, you know, what does this guy throw at uh, on the first pitch? Just sort of what is, is there something that you focus on in particular? How, how good is this guy's stuff? How good is his breaking ball? Um, uh, pitch just, profile and then two strikes if he likes to get nastier or expand out of the zone. What he likes to expand out of the zone with, I think that helps me out a lot. And now – is that knowledge when you take it to the box you hear so this is kind of contradicting uh, uh, you know for me at least everybody says don't think at the box don't do too much just you know do your swing but then again you guys have so much information here so where's the line of all of that information here and then trying to just not do too much at the box i think that's what separates the good players from the even better players you know they just know how to manage it. All the thoughts they have going through their head just to stay true to their one goal. So it's what everyone wants to do. That's good. Yeah. Not uh, succumbing to the pressure or all those thoughts. You just got to go up there. I trust yeah. my ability. Yeah. Yep. Just it's like on the pitching stuff. side. Yeah. yeah. I know with the the pitchers, the a lot of the raised pitchers, they just say, hey, you, you got your pro for a reason. 
Yeah, exactly. Good strikes. So yeah. go from there. Now, is there some research with video on, I don't know, let's see, let's say you, you've you had a, a bad three games, all right? Maybe uh, this, this Greg Jones has never had three bad games in a row. In a hypothetical, in a hypothetical yeah. world. <laughs> in a hypothetical world where this would happen. Um, what's your state of mind? What do you do to not go into, you know, bog, bog down in negativity? is focusing on hobbies outside of watching more what, what what do you do when you're kind of in a funk um probably watch i'll probably watch some video but i'm also taking in and taking in like my outcomes of those ab's that i might have gone over three from like if it's three barrels and i'm lining out somewhere that has a lot to do with it like i'm not going to be mad obviously like i'm right. still putting great swings on the ball but just like not getting the outcomes that i want just just playing baseball because that's what it is. Yeah. But yeah, just it depends. Now, if I'm like out of sync, like not feeling good, I'll try to go back to the drawing board, you know, maybe get some extra hitting in, so maybe some one on one hitting, watching some video, dial it back in, go back to what made me, what got me there, you know. Now, what is, let's say you, you figure something out. Is it, your stance, maybe your your hands were a little bit uh, too low, but and and then you got into this kind of bad stretch. How much tinkering do you do throughout the season for adjustments, uh, or, or do you try to just look? This is my swing. If it doesn't work, I'm just gonna keep doing it. What what what's your stand on making little adjustments throughout the season? Uh, it depends on what it is and how comfortable I feel with it. Did you have something I mean, in 2021, for example, that you were working on? No. I would just say staying inside of baseball, which is you can see your outcomes from that. Mm. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, Ulysses, should we move on to the 2022 questions looking ahead yes. for Greg Jones? Yes. Um, 2022. Okay. So besides staying healthy, which is the, the proverbial number one goal that every athlete has in it, every sport what are you working on for 2022 is it gaining more pop uh adding another position under your belt uh improving glove work well what's that one thing that you want 2022 to kind of step up step up your game well i mean i i can, I can easily improve in every facet of the game but there's none that i'm focusing on more than others i'm just trying to go out there and have fun with the game Honestly, that's a good approach. <laughs> that's a good approach. <laughs> yeah. Um, what if coaches have coaches instructed you or told you, hey, you need to fine tune this or work on this to advance to the next level, triple A, the big leagues that, hey, you really, you're a great athlete, great player as it is, but these little things can really make a big difference as far as elevating your game to a higher step. No, honestly, no. Mm. Just kind of keep doing what you're doing, basically. Yeah, like, hey, your numbers doing. are good, your your stats yeah. are good, you're you're as athletic as could be. Just keep keep getting reps, basically. I guess, yeah, right? Pretty much playing the game, playing, yeah. just playing. That's important. Is just that yeah. experience factor. Is yeah. just yeah. get. I don't I don't know what the exact number is, but they say you know minor leaguers need to get a what a thousand fifteen hundred at bats to really get settled in and comfortable before right you know getting that opportunity in the big leagues do you do you feel that greg where you know how many more at bats and how many how, how, how much more reps do you feel like you need before man i'm ready to play in a raise uniform i mean you, you're probably thinking like i could play now but I, i'm sure <laughs> is there a point where it's like you know i could use a little more you know another another half season another couple months and i think i'm, I'm ready for the next step i mean i'm always ready whenever but I mean, we've already been playing like big league camp and like other stuff like that. So you've already been playing pretty much big league baseball. Yeah. I don't think there's much different in that besides fans and maybe the teams you're playing, maybe. Yeah. But now, does that give you confidence of knowing that, hey, I'm, I'm getting some reps and at bats against big league pitchers and I've had yeah, some success against them that, hey, I can do this? Yeah, 100%. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Especially uh, when you go up against like a really good dude and you get you get a hit. Yeah. Have you had that feeling in during spring training this year? No, not this year, no. Okay. I'm just saying, I know that's a good feeling when you can say you face like a really good dude or like mm -hmm. a guy that's on the big league roster. Yeah. And just tell everyone that you got a hit off of him. I think <laughs> it's pretty cool, you know. Especially <laughs> as a young guy. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> I bet it is. I bet it is. Now, yeah. is there a guy that's right now in, you know, maybe in a couple of years, maybe in a year, maybe even whenever, the X time that you are wearing a Rays uniform, is there somebody that you are like, you know what? I'd love to face him. I want to see how I would do with that guy, against that guy. Um, I don't, I would say I, I want to face him, but I don't want to face him at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But Tyler Glass now, I just want to stand in the box. Oh, yes. I just want to stand in the box. Yeah. I don't know if I want to swing or anything, but right. I just stand there and see what it looks like. You, you see some Tyler Glass now pitches and you're probably like, okay, I can handle just about <laughs> I've seen that and that and that, then I'm good. I can face anything. I mean, 99 yeah, exactly. at the top and then just a 12 Absolutely. 6 curve and then yep. you got that slutter or whatever oh, he calls it at, at six years. foot eight and that extension. Oh my goodness. Whew. You know what? He, he actually, Greg, you might be able to get that, uh, you know, maybe in a little uh, action, rehab, action. rehab action. Yeah. No, I think well, Greg he's he's, he's in the right boot right, right now. We're breaking here pretty soon, so I don't mm -hmm. think I'll get to face him when he's coming back. Uh, I'll probably be at affiliate ball by then. There you go. Okay. Uh, okay, Greg, I'm gonna bring this up. You're a shortstop by nature, by trade, but the Rays also have a shortstop named Wander Franco. So I don't know what that means for the Rays going forward, but are you have the Rays said anything about you're getting you're gonna get some more reps in center field or some other positions? Just what? Where do you stand and where do you lie on that? I don't know kind of what you expect going into 2022 if they're going to be like, hey, you're going to play more shortstop this year or more center field this year. Um, those words have never came out of their mouth and I've never taken a rep outside of the shortstop position. Okay. Look at that. You can uh, uh, never have enough. No. Athletic, good shortstops. So. If there isn't one word that we've noticed about the Rays – uh, in, in their success is that D word depth. Yes. You need the depth. And I, and I think they, they have it in a bunch in the middle infield for sure. That is true. That is true. Um, Ulysses, should we move on yes. to some, some fun questions yes. here besides just the nitty gritty of baseball? Yes. I actually, uh, I, I really want to ask you this. Uh, you mentioned this, Kevin, actually earlier, the, the signing bonus, um, any dream items that you've been able to, to kind of purchase to to say you know what i'm a professional baseball player now a car a house a, a tech a gadget anything that you kind of spoiled yourself with um i would say i spoiled my parents more than anything we got them really? house okay. we, finally, we got them a house back home you know where something keep a roof over their heads so nice that was that was my that was my first big purchase and you know that's something i really wanted to do once i got it you know gotta love that gotta love that Got to take care of the family. Yeah, it's important. Right. That's awesome. Wouldn't be here without them. Any 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 other fun things for yourself though? Um, I maybe got a couple. You know, what? I got me a car that I really enjoy. You know. There you go. You have yeah. you gotta get the car. Yeah. You gotta I get the I'd love to know what car it is, but if you don't want to reveal, I totally <laughs> understand. It's a Jeep. Okay. There you go. Oh, so you're an outdoorsy guy, then, correct? Um, kind of. Okay. But the Jeep's not for the outdoors. Ah, his one's an SUV. Okay. Yeah, there it's a Grand Cherokee. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I was thinking the the you know the mud slide, the action movie no, film, yeah. Greg Jones starring in. No. Well, Greg, what you can't do is you can't park in Eric Neander's spot. I won't do <laughs> that. They don't, they don't allow us to park inside the gate, so we park outside. Ah, there you go. No, there I don't get close go. to this spot. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. Um. Now, like also Kevin uh, said before, we've had, I mean, we've had Ford Proctor, Blake Hunt, uh, Garrett Whitley, the, the list goes on on the show. And so many of these guys, ha uh, Jack Lebowski, yeah. uh, so many of these guys have named you the most freak athlete. When we ask them, who is just crazy? They say Greg Jones. What does that mean to you when all of your peers – are basically just naming you as like the most crazy athlete that they have ever seen. And they themselves are athletes. Like, what does that mean to you? Um, I guess that's cool that they think <laughs> of me that, that way. But I'm just, like I said before, I just go out there and try to have fun with the game. I don't even, I don't think about it. I might make some plays that other people might not make, but just being myself. 
when you say make plays that other people can't, is it going? I didn't say it can't. I said they might not. Ah, that's uh, right. <laughs> I said, yeah. There you go. I like that. I like that. They might not. Is it a uh, going in the hole as a shortstop? Is it diving place? Is it jumping place? Like, what do you think is that highlight reel for you? Whatever it could be, it could be anything. You know, mm -hmm. you know, a spin throw like one of those spin throws I made last year. You know, yeah, I don't know, it could be anything. Or going to get a fly ball out there in the outfield. You know. What? Okay, so kind of tying into that a little bit, Greg, what gives you the most of a hype or um, satisfaction as a ball player? Is it stealing a bag? Is it getting a home run? Is it making a great defensive play? Is it something else? What's something that's like, man, I really hang my hat on being able to do that. I guess it depends on the game and the situation, but is there something in particular like, man, I, I really love to when I accomplish or do that? I can't pinpoint one, but like I like being able to come up when they need like if you're in this situation to do something good mm -hmm. or like they need you to do something like say you're on first base and you need to steal second and you steal second. That's uh -huh. a great feeling, you know, gotcha. that's a great feeling or either you like make a diving play in the hole, you save a run and you throw the guy out at first. It's the same. It's the same feeling. So you when a walk off grand slam, you're coming in. Che cheering on everyone you know everyone's cheering you on yeah it's, it's kind of like the same thing it's like what everyone plays for so you you thrive of when the expectation is high when the moment is the the high this has to happen and it's on greg jones's shoulder that's what you like i mean it's not necessarily that i like it i don't like being put in the situation i don't think anyone <laughs> wants to be in that situation if they choose to be in the situation but I like to say, I, you know, if, when it comes down to things, I'm a. I you you won't fool me the moment, down. basically. Like yeah, you exactly. can feel, hey, if there's 40,000 screaming fans and it's a big time moment, like you're not going to shudder. You're going to, exactly. I'm still going to be Greg Jones. Yeah. yeah, at the end of the day, I'm still going to be myself. That's important. That's what they say clutch is. They say clutch yes. is not necessarily being more than you are in a big moment. It's not falling apart in a big moment don't say that to oh, yeah. the analytics people who don't believe in clutch because i believe uh, in clutch i know that you do uh, you also believe in clutch uh yeah. clutchness greg are you uh are, are you a believer in that some players can be clutch and some others unfortunately are not clutch um yeah 100 all right some players some people some guys just know how to calm their heart rate down in the situations some people don't they let it get the best of them. Yeah, I like how you put that. Calm their heartbeat down. Uh, how do you how do you do that? Me personally, I really try to focus on my breathing. Okay. Mm. Really slow in and deep in and out deep breaths. That's what I, that's all I try to do. Something I do every time I get in the box actually to get get me a little locked in. Okay. Are are you a meditation guy? Are you a yoga guy? No. No, okay. just a couple of just a couple of deep breaths won't never hurt anyone, you know. <laughs> and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the Rays do monitor heartbeat or heart rate. They've got some different contraptions there. I don't yeah, know if do. they use it on they everybody, do. but yeah, no, so always getting monitored, I guess. Yeah. Um, so, Greg, we know that you're. Uh, I mean, I think we can say that the the best athlete in the Rays organization. But besides yourself, who is another athlete in the Rays organization that you've said that that you've thought to yourself, man? This guy's also got it a little bit too. You know, I got to add my boy Xavier Edwards on there. You know, he's mm. great bat to ball skills. You know, guy's going to go out there and hit 350 every year, still use some bags. Great defender. What more can you ask for? Uh, Middle infield. Middle that, infield. Yeah. that depth. I love hey. the stolen base. Yes. I love the bring, Let's bring back athletes into bring baseball. That speed. Yes. Yeah. Bring them back. I'm tired of everyone just hitting home runs. Like oh. there's more to there's more to it. So refreshing. Yes. That's the baseball that we all fell in love with. We when when uh Sports Center top ten came on and then it was a, a, a highlight reel number six and it was a home run, you were like, uh, oh, you were kind of let yeah. down. You wanted to see the guy sprinting from first to, to home. Exactly. That's the yeah. big, you know, highlight reel. Exactly. Well, what I wanted to see was Carl Crawford stealing six bags in a game against the Red Sox. That's what I wanted to see. Yes. Like that's the fun stuff to me for yeah. sure. Um, yeah. 
Greg, I do have a question kind of going back a little bit to your college days. What made you choose UNC Wilmington as opposed to maybe some other larger universities? I mean, it doesn't seem, I mean, again, I could be wrong, but it doesn't seem like UNC Wilmington's like the biggest baseball hotspot. There's, you know, more uh, pronounced uh, college programs, but why that program was it the coaching staff, the facilities close to home, just what stood out to you? Uh, my only offer. Wow. No way. Talk about, I think uh, some college coaches need to be. <laughs> yeah. Some, yeah. Yeah. Some, yeah, some college people. That yeah, is so unreal. Got, got big schools in my backyard and they don't even take the time to come see you, but it's whatever. I still got is that motivation for you. Or was that motivation? 100%. 100%. For you? That's awesome. Oh, love that. I love a guy with the chip on his shoulder. Yes. Prove, prove people wrong. Prove them wrong. A hundred percent. I like that. Clearly, I mean, look at the signing bonus. Look at where <laughs> yeah. Greg Jones is right now. Yeah. Those coaches are, hey, you know what? They're a loss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally, yeah. in a way. How was your time at, at Wilmington? Uh, 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 do you still wouldn't, have a lot of friends there? Do you go back? Wouldn't change it for anything. That's where I work out in the offseason. Mm, look at that. That's great. Just like, uh, I mean, Kevin Kiermaier didn't go there, but he works out at University of Tampa. We're seeing that a lot where yeah. uh, football yeah. players are working out at college campuses. So, yeah. You know, having the facilities open and so forth. Um, Ulysses, should we do a couple of quick hitters with? I think so. Greg, okay. I think we should. Yeah. Um, do you want to go first? Sure. Um, Greg, what is your favorite food? My favorite food? Mm -hmm. Chicken wings. Buffalo chicken wings, 100%. Okay, good choice. Nice. Um, what is your favorite film? Film? Yes. Mm. I'll say The Blind Side. Okay. okay. Good choice. Throwback, yeah. What about mm. favorite TV show? Hmm. I'm not sure on that one. Not a big TV show guy. Okay. All right. Do you watch anything? Is there a show you're watching right now on Netflix or Hulu or? No, nah, I don't watch a lot of TV, honestly. Oh. Mostly, mo if I do watch TV, it's normally like a college baseball game or like the Final oh. Four. You know, we got basketball going on right now. Yeah. yeah. Might, might watch some golf every once in a while, but that's about it. Okay. Uh, hang on. Let me yes. pause for a second. Greg, you watch golf. Are you a golfer as well? Uh, I wouldn't consider myself a golfer. I play golf. Okay. <laughs> what is what is your – there are some good golfers in the Rays organization. Blake yes. Hunt, for example, Curtis. Yes, Pete, I play with Blake quite a bit, and he puts me to shame, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's that's uh, uh yeah. I mean, when Curtis Mead and and Blake, oh, yeah, with their golf. I played with I played with both of them, and they're both phenomenal golfers. Yeah, their handicap is like two and three. Like they're yeah, yeah they're damn near scratch players. golfers. It's kind of I, it puts me to kind of sickening, right? Yeah. No, I mean Greg, I honestly. <laughs> no, Greg. Um, uh, if we were to this is this is my level. I'm a mini golfer. I haven't even taken yeah. Kevin's offer to go to the golf course. I'm like, you know, let's keep it to mini golf. That's yeah. how my talent is. So. That's how you save your money too. Yeah. It's an expensive sport. Yeah. Uh, question, Greg, for sure. do you, uh, do you golf lefty or righty? Ah, I'm a righty golfer. Okay. That makes yeah. sense because there's a, natural, a natural lot righty righty that are righty. Yeah. yeah. I can't swing a golf club lefty to save my life. Mm. Hmm. Um, okay. Okay. This is a tough one, but where do you want to make your debut? Fenway Park or Yankee Stadium if it has to be an away game? Probably Fenway. No, 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 no. Mm, <laughs> probably Yankee Stadium. I think Why? I have a higher chance of hitting a home run. Mm. Smaller, smaller park. That right field porch. Yeah. I know it. But uh, do, I want to, do I want to face Garrett Cole or anything? <laughs> okay. Probably not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you never know. <laughs> Fastball down the middle, you know. Yeah, here's hey. what you do. You, you get some tips from G-Man Choi. I was going to say, this has G-Man, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Trust G-Man. Yeah. yeah, that's the way to go. <laughs> um, who is, or let me let me think about this question. Um, who is your favorite? You, you mentioned that you didn't have necessarily like a favorite baseball player growing up but do you have a favorite athlete in general uh currently or when you were growing up basketball no, it, was, it was just jose reyes honestly wow yeah honestly i thought he was a, the coolest shortstop ever 
Oh, yes, I mean, yeah, we thought so too. Play, <laughs> yeah, no, that was like, switch yeah, hitter cool. with wheels. I was like, I want to be like that guy. Gosh, well, you can emulate him pr pretty good. Um, okay, my question. I, I I like doing this one a lot, Kevin. So you know where I'm going uh, with this one. I'm a big, big proponent proponent of international baseball. As you can see, I'm from Venezuela originally, so that's my okay. Venezuelan World Baseball Classic hat. Um, if given the choice of being an MLB All Star or being in the starting lineup of the team USA in the World Baseball Classic, which one do you? I kind of went out on me. Say that again. If you had the choice of being an MLB mm -hmm. All Star one year, like in the in the lineup, starting lineup, or being in the World Baseball Classic wearing the Team USA jersey, which one do you pick? I mean, being able to play in the World Classic is I feel like it's like a once in a lifetime mm -hmm. opportunity. So definitely playing for like USA, I think would be more enticing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the starting shortstop for the USA, yeah. Greg Jones. That would be pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. Or Greg can do both the All Star game and the. <laughs> he WBC. has to pick one that year. No. He has to only pick one. He's they doing both. He's doing both. Do both. Maybe if I'm an All Star for one, maybe it'll be a couple more. Sure. There we there go. You go. Hey, good point. Good uh -huh. point. Uh, last one from me. Um, who is the? I guess the nastiest pitcher in the Rays organization that you've faced or encountered or, or you've watched, um, you know, in, in the minor leagues that, that has been on your team and you, you faced him in practice or you've seen him in a game. And it's like, man, that guy is legit. He's going to be a star one day. Don't you realize I face these guys every day and <laughs> everyone is good. Or if you want to rattle like, off a couple names, you can, yeah. And you can rattle off all the starters from my team last year. Then, oh, okay, I mean, everybody's you should, good. You should see them. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. You go out there, you're not seeing a righty under 95 every day with absolutely nasty stuff. I or mean, we that's the same way, like, yeah, that's a good way to look at you're what surrounded, the, you're surrounded by the best players around, and they're, they're there for a reason, and none of them. I mean, obviously, there's some that are going to be better than others, but they all have fit stuff. And to, to pinpoint one out, I feel like it's really hard. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's an astute point, too, because look at the Rays. It is a pitching factory. Yes. And look at the success that all the minor league teams in the Rays organization had last year. Yeah. Yeah. You could probably rattle. Yeah, there's 30 good guys. There's <laughs> 40 good guys that are, you know, have potential. So that's a great point there, right. too. And the last one for me is, but I am going to put your 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 feet to the fire here. You do have to give me an answer. Oh, okay. I have to give you an answer. Have to. What is? I have to. You have. See, I'm, to. I'm nicer, Greg. I, I let you <laughs> okay. waffle on that last. We'll see. We'll see. What is what is your favorite hobby outside of baseball? Is it reading? Is it? Uh, I know you, it's not TV shows. I know that. Reading. Reading. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I would say I do quite a I do a little bit of hunting. Okay. I do, which a lot of people would probably don't see from me, but yeah, I do a little bit of hunting in the off season and I enjoy okay. it a lot. Wow. When did this start? Um probably in high school. Back in what, high school. What, what do you what do you hunt? Duck, deer, you know. Anything that anything. <laughs> Ulysses is clearly a hunter, so he. Yeah, totally, I, I, yeah. I have no knowledge of this. This is a, a completely. Uh, I don't. I don't know anything about this world. Wow. Okay. So you've been doing it for for a while now, like six, seven years now. Yeah. Couple, yeah. yeah. And there's several. Not, other not. I mean, some of these guys really get into it. I'm not like most of these guys. I got. Okay. I just started like really like getting into it and learning a little bit about it. But some of these guys are just like next level with it, and those are the guys I'm trying to hang out with. So like okay. maybe I can get up to their level one day, you know what I'm saying? Now uh, I I I bet there are a couple of guys that you, from 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 baseball that you go. I I, I'm, I think Ford Proctor also mentioned that he was a hunter. Uh, are you do you are do you go out with him or somebody no, else? I've never been. I've never been with Ford, but there's been some guys like John Daksakis. Okay. Yeah, that I've hunted with. You know JJ Goss. Hopefully soon they gotta they yeah. gotta.
a nice little ranch in Texas. So hopefully he invites me. Out. Okay. Yeah. Would you rather be a great hunter or a great golfer if you had your choice? Ooh. Probably a golfer. You can take a lot of money. <laughs> That's true. You know, like guys that are guys that are golfers are just like sneaky athletic and they will they will run your pockets. Oh, that's well, pretty cool. That's an off season gig now for, for Greg, too. <laughs> yeah. I ain't good enough yet. Hey, we learned a lot about Greg. Yeah, Greg, you are a fantastic guest. Yes, we hope you do this again at some point when you're uh, maybe playing in the show before long. That yes, would be great. Maybe. So, thank you so much for joining us and being so open and uh you know giving your thoughts and opinions on things and i mean i think we speak for every race fan out there that we're wishing greg the best of success and we've heard all we did literally it seems like every week every day there's a, a greg jones video yeah. or look hey look at his numbers look at it look, hey look what he did today like it's it's crazy the amount of love there is in the prospect world for greg jones yeah we're in, we're very thrilled uh obviously to have you here but you know what you are going to be doing in 2022 and beyond uh thank you so much for your time and uh, do you have a message for race fans that are listening to this and viewing this on youtube what, what what do you what can you say to those race fans um you know play the game hard every day you never know how where it'll take you 